So a couple hundred years ago, people started to hybridize strawberries and it produced a superior fruit. A fruit that's, you know, tastes better, it's, it's bigger, it has more sugar, more flavorful in different ways. And a lot of my work is interested in understanding when you create a hybrid species, a new organism that has a genome from species A and a genome from species B, now they're smashed together in this new context. I want to understand how those genomes interact. So let's think about a hybridization event between two species, species A and species B. If a polyploid event happens and that offspring, that hybrid offspring is actually tetraploid, having four copies, two from A and two from B, you have two genomic sets within that single nucleus. And so the set that's derived from species A and the set that's derived from species B, those are referred to as subgenomes. We wanted to ask Within these two subgenomes, how does the plant choose which recipe to use? So we measured expression for, for tens of thousands of genes within these hybrid plants and mapped it to the genome and said how many recipes, how many gene or gene pathways are expressed from subgenome A and how many are expressed from subgenome B. And what we found is that there's a very clear dominant genome within this hybrid individual. Transposons are historically thought of as junk DNA. They're these pieces of DNA in the genome that aren't encoding for genes. They're just these pieces of DNA that can insert themselves randomly across the genome and potentially cause deleterious problems. Historically, people have ignored these, but what we wanted to do is ask the question, are genes that are found in these transposon dense regions, are they collateral damage? Is the plant trying to repress those transposons but inadvertently represses the gene? We found that the subgenome that contained fewer transposons was less repressed than the subgenome that contained more transposons. If we're trying to breed a superior strawberry, a more flavorful strawberry, a strawberry that maybe is firm so it can ship well, but also retains its flavor and sugar content. But we want to edit the genes that are on the genome that's being expressed. Editing the genes that are on the genome that's being controlled is probably not going to yield as much of a result. Every organism on Earth has a genome, and many of these genomes contain transposons. So this study provides a fundamental insight into how genomes are functioning, and as a result, how genomes evolve. So if we're trying to understand the diversity of life on the planet, and we're trying to understand over the past many millions of years how land plants have evolved, and how land plant genomes are sculpted, we have to consider transposons. And this work provides a foundation looking at the functional importance of transposons in genome evolution.